how did you become a non-feminist woman? Um, I guess, I don't know, I don't think I've ever really felt fully a part of that community in general. Mm -hmm. Like, I've always had really separate views as to what a lot of other women that I know have, which kind of results in, I guess, it's almost being ostracized because you don't, I guess, fit in with the, what everyone thinks that a woman should be wanting nowadays. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense um kind of started in school where you'd see like literal five-year-old girls antagonizing these boys mm -hmm. and the focus was always on the boys reacting to this mm -hmm. it was never the fact that these girls were nasty human beings that were trying to get a bite as hard as possible and then say a boy eventually hits a girl which i admit isn't wrong but when you got five-year-olds winding each other up. Something's going to come from it, hey. And, you know, so eventually, say the boy hits a girl, well, there'll be a massive assembly mm -hmm. about how it's so wrong that boys are hitting girls and how we need to be gentle with girls and all that when really it was the manipulation that started all of it. Mm -hmm. okay. You know? Yeah. Um, and I guess also feminism seems like a twisted perversion of what it was to begin with. Like at the start they were fighting for real human rights mm -hmm. that we didn't really have. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, I don't know if you know, but New Zealand was the first place to let women vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, we've got a huge feminist background in this country. Okay. Um, but it's just we've got all the rights that we could ever need. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make sense why they're still arguing and everything when, Dude, we're not missing out on anything. Right, right. Women and men have equal rights, so there's nothing for we feminism don't... to argue about. There's no need for not anyone really. to, to be a feminist online today and so on. No. Um, they, if, if, you, if you want to argue for equality in other areas, I think you can call yourself an egalitarian, include everyone, and just talk about where you feel everyone has disadvantages, not just women or not just minorities or not just, you know. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I also think, like, at the same time, um, I don't know, just the whole thing to me, it just doesn't sit right. <laughs> yeah. Um, equality is a subjective thing in my mind. Right. Like, for something to be equal, it has to be the same. Right. And we're not the same. Yes. You know, like there's fundamental differences. Right. This is another. And yeah. us. I agree. We talk a lot about egalitarianism and equality, and it's also because, like, feminist culture has pushed this thing into our head that if, if it's not equal, it's so bad. You know, if we're not equal, then we're terrible people. If you're not for equality, you're an evil person. But in the back of our heads, also, we're like, but, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> you know? <laughs> What if men and women just aren't equal? Like, what, what no, if we're just not the same? Thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And look, if we're honest, we're yeah. all a little bit sexist in one way or another. Of course. My partner's going to ask me to make him dinner. Yeah. And I'm going to ask him to take the rubbish out. Right. Of course, of course. <laughs> you we, know. And no, I mean, in general, we all display some sort of sexism. That's how we choose, you know, mates and so on. We We discriminate in this sense. And... I do believe that there are differences between men and women. Maybe we don't have to harp on these differences. And for some people, since it clearly frustrates feminism, feminists, then we have to yeah. like ease up and say, okay, well, you know, everyone can do whatever they want and we live in a free world and so on. So we need that base, this, that basic level of equality. But if women make different choices from men, that should be okay. And that mm. should just fall under diversity men and women yeah. aren't going to make the same choices and that's okay they have different uh outlooks because maybe they're slightly different in a biological sense maybe maybe breastfeeding is important to women let them stay at home and and take care of their kids if that's what you know that's what they want why do we have to push for this sort of equality why do we have to push for men to yeah to stay home just as much as women and women to be just as economically, you know, it's like, you know, wh why are we pushing for this? Is it, what is the problem, you know? 
yeah, well, I feel like a lot of it is, I mean, men are going to be more economically better off than us because at the end of the day, most women have children. Right. Which means that they have to take a significant amount of time off work. And possibly women. So how are they supposed is. to have the same economic outcome? Exactly. A, they're not at work as much because if the kid's sick, they're off work. B, they should be home raising their kids. You have kids so you can raise them, not so you can give them to daycares and everything. Like, personally, yeah. I'm not, I don't want kids. Yeah. But I completely understand people that do, and I think it's not fair on them. Right. Like, you should be able to stay home with your kids if that's what you want, but that's where it kind of comes to the whole equality. Yeah, we can be separate but equal. Yeah. You know, and the gender roles that we should really be in, ideally. Right. Um, and, and I think there's just such this thing where we all have to be the same. It's like, dude, if you want equality that bad, you realise women are going to get drafted for war and stuff like that because you want equality. Right, but they never want equality, that equality on the good side. No, no, they want equality on the good side. When when it yeah. comes to equality on the bad side, then it's silence, then it's a problem, then, then they don't want equality. And that's what no. I think men complain about because, I mean... What, if we look at the the whole reproductive rights situation with abortion, yeah, abortion is important for for women to have as a right and so on and so on, right? It's a woman's right, okay. Um, it's also bodily autonomy. I understand that, but I'm just saying, if you want true equality, when we equate these things, if you're saying to me that you need the option to opt out of parenting because if you don't want to be a parent, you don't want to be a parent, okay, fine. But equality is equality. Your equality means that men need that option. And this opens up a whole other can of worms that society doesn't want to deal with. So Financial abortions is exactly, what needs to happen. It, exactly. Financial abortions will be a thing if you really want equality. That is equality. Why are they not out there marching for abortions and also marching for men to opt out? Because that is equality. Equality is you match for the men to opt out, you match for the women to opt out. You are pro-choice, you need to be pro-choice for them. But when they want equality on one side, whenever things are beneficial for them, you know, but when it comes to other forms of equality, they're silenced. Oh, it's all about bodily autonomy. Yeah, you would like it to all be about bodily autonomy, but the reality is it's about you not having a child, okay? If I want to have yeah. an abortion... The reason I want to have an abortion is because I don't want to have a child. A hundred percent. Yeah. And um, so many men get called deadbeat dads and horrible people. It's like, did he actually want that kid to begin with, though? Right. Like, did he have a say did in he what have was a going say? on? Exactly. And, and I understand that most societies, like, nobody has a say, okay, for a long time. But the, the point is, if feminists are going to be out there marching for women to have a say, <laughs> and then at the same time, they're going to say that their equality people or what they want is just equality feminism is just equality that's all that it is right if it's all so you look at the definition <laughs> yeah yeah you know like, yeah that's all that we are we're just equality people no 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 you need to yeah no 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 um, so do you believe that we live in a patriarchy i think it's a piss take is to what? think that we do like I mean, in New Zealand, we've had multiple female prime ministers. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure I looked at Belgium and you guys have had at least one. Oh, gosh. I, I do live in Belgium, yeah. Um, but I yeah. just moved here like two years ago. I have no idea what the history of yeah. Belgium is. But, I mean, you look at most societies. <laughs> yeah. And majority of them have had female leaders. Like, yeah. New Zealand's part of the monarchy. Mm -hmm. We had a queen for, like, what, 80 years? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I think... I mean, to say we live in a patriarchy means that all the power lies with men, mm -hmm. right? And it, it really doesn't. The power inherently lies with women nowadays, and I think that's why you see a lot of the things that you see nowadays, you mm -hmm. know? Women know that they have something that men want, mm -hmm. and they will use it to every possible advantage to get what they do want a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So what are your thoughts on traditional gender rules? Well, like I mentioned earlier, I'm, I don't partic I don't want kids. My mm -hmm. partner doesn't either. Mm -hmm. Decision from a lot of things that we've both been through in life and pretty much it's just not our thing. In saying that, I 100% believe in traditional gender roles and I think that if I was to have grown up in a different society and exist in a different society, my choices would be a lot different. Mm 
Um, the fact of the matter is, say I was to have a kid, I'm going to have to work my ass off mm-hmm. to afford to be able to have that kid and provide the kind of life that it deserves. Okay. Um, and that, to me, it's not possible in this day and age. So I've created a society where you all have to work. Right. Like, there's no other way to keep your head afloat unless you're on a flat. But then if you've got kids, you shouldn't be flatting, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's also kind of sad, right? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's there are a lot of other factors that go into it as well, of course, but I think that is quite a big factor is knowing that in this day and age to be financially stable for a lot of people really is a pipe dream. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. that really does make it hard for people to want to have kids when they know that. So and then I'm have in addition kid. to that, we've sort of broken down the community that we would have had. Mm-hmm. So that's also a factor because, I mean... Even if you didn't have money, I think you could have children if you had a really good support system. A hundred percent. Yeah. But without that, um, yeah. And and that support system is being broken down by the fact that everything in culture is pushing all this independence. You don't need people. You don't need a man. You don't need your parents. Your parents are horrible. They're toxic. Men are toxic. Everyone is just toxic. You know, there's no kind of like, let's, try to tolerate each other and figure it out mm. and, you know, have patience with each other because maybe we need each other. Um, but I guess it's also because we don't need each other. So that's the... Well, you've got so many options through social right. media. That... Right. You don't actually need each other. So we need each other less. So that's, I guess, something good because, yeah, we don't need each other because we've been financially successful as a culture. And, mm. yeah. Okay. So what are your thoughts on MRAs, men's rights activists? So there's only one that I'm really familiar with, which is Roma Army. Mm -hmm. And she's awesome. I agree with a lot of what she says. But at the same time, some things seem to really lean more towards, I guess, tox. It really is like the to and fro, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You've got the fanatics on feminist side which you know you're going to have fanatics everywhere Mm -hmm. I think generally they're the issue not saying that Roma is I love what she does Mm -hmm. but um yeah I think that some of them are too extreme yeah and I think that's the big problem these days is gone are the days where you you could I don't know think oh my god what an idiot right and just keep it to yourself yeah you know, like everything these days has to be said, and I think that's where a lot of the controversy and issues come from, right. is uh, you have that anonymous platform as well. Um, I think the fact that we need MRAs is really fucking sad. Right. Like, yeah. we shouldn't have to bite back right. people. We shouldn't be fighting. Not men and women no. shouldn't be fighting. It should just be like, if we have a problem, we need. yeah, let's sort it out together, you know? <laughs> you can have a problem with one human being from a gender without hating a whole gender. Right, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and there's such a generalisation, especially when it comes to men, like, oh, I've been hurt by, I don't know, two of the men in my life, so now all men are going to hurt me. It's like, well, in reality, you've probably met over a thousand men. Right. And if two of them hurt you, right. let's look at the statistics there. Yeah, there's a lot more good than bad in the world if that's where you want to look. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I think that's a lot where the MRAs are coming from. Is they're like, dude, like men aren't all bad. And every feminist goes, yeah, we know it's not all men. It's like, yeah, but your actions kind of go against what you're saying when you say it's not all men because you make all these generalizations about how horrible men are and the patriarchy and how they're all out to make sure we don't have our rights, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. What are your thoughts on hypergamy? I think to each their own to a point. I think if there's no manipulation involved and the end goal isn't to seek a partner of the higher social status, then there's no issue. But mm-hmm. unfortunately, a lot of times, I guess that's not really the situation that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's no issue with getting with someone outside of your status or okay. 
okay. um, anything. But I think that, but yeah, think, it shouldn't be a monetarily that, driven choice. Okay, but do you think that women generally do this, do this or not? From what I see on social media and what I've heard from a lot of women, yeah, I think the general consensus is that you want to marry a rich guy so your life's easy and your kids' lives are easy. Um, like, even I've been guilty when relationships have ended. Like, I F this, I'm not marrying for love next time. Next time I'm marrying for money. Okay, not okay. that I mean it. But, you know, it's even a joke that's made quite often, I think. Okay. So, but do you think women really look for this or it's not that big a deal? Mm, I think some do. I okay. think it's dependent, really. I mean, right. you look at the OnlyFans girls and stuff like that, and I genuinely think that that's what they're seeking. Okay. Um, but I think the general woman doesn't particularly. Okay, right. So uh, that's a good answer. Some do, some don't, most don't, probably. I think it, de- it yeah. depends on your personality points, doesn't it? And I right. guess it depends on the upbringing that you had, like, if you've grown up with nothing, I think you always dream of having something. Right. Yeah, and I a lot of times the only way to achieve that is through strategical partnership, I suppose. Right. Okay. Okay. I agree. So what are your thoughts on gynocentrism? Do you think the world is easier for women? Is it centered around women? How? Yeah. See, that's where I think it a little bit and a little oh, bit sorry. not. It okay. depends on kind of what you're looking at, really. If you're looking at society as a whole, I think there is this huge thing placed on women. Like I said, you see a hell of a lot more women influences than you do male. Okay, yeah. Um, there's lots of... Sorry, I'm trying to think. Because I did try to research this first, and I really did struggle actually finding anything on it, funnily enough. Okay, okay. So it's just... The question is more, do you think that the world is... Are people nicer to women? Do do we have more sympathy for women? Is life easier for women? Is society better to women than men yeah. or what? I mean, in general, I think so. Even the court systems are definitely angled towards women mm-hmm. and making sure that they have it a little bit easier than males, I guess. Okay. Okay. And what are your thoughts on intersectionality? I mean, I, from what I researched on it, Everyone, it's pretty much a way of saying that everyone experiences some form of oppression, really, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Not everyone, think, but groups. Yeah. I, I suppose if you're a white male who's heterosexual and has money, then no. <laughs> then you're perceived not to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's the issue, I think. Is it's Again, it's all subjective, isn't it? Mm-hmm. What's your definition on being oppressed? Some people's definition of being oppressed is not being able to say what they want to say. Mm -hmm. Other people's definition of oppressed is not being able to leave the house. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's where a lot of the issues come from is is such a huge victim mentality where everyone just wants to lean into the fact that at some point in their lives they've become a victim Mm -hmm. rather than figuring out ways to prevent that happening again or I guess become more knowledgeable Mm -hmm. so that they can fight back if that makes sense. Okay. Um, what is your take on being called a pick-me girl? I hate that so much because mm-hmm. I have had it a lot and I've noticed that a lot of the time they really do use it as, I guess, an insult when they've got nothing better to say. Mm-hmm. When you've made your point and they're sitting there like, oh, okay, I don't think I can argue with this. Well, you're just a pick-me girl. Mm -hmm. And then I'll leave it at that. Um, I mean, like, the definition of it. Do you know the proper definition of what a pick-me girl is? Yeah, it's quite controversial because I think pick-me girl, it comes from some, what is it? It's someone who would have, um, is it something like who cheated or something? Who causes your man to No. What is it? What is the original definition? So the definition that I got was a girl who seeks male validation by indirectly or directly insinuating that she is not like other girls. Yeah, okay. This, yeah. Someone who sets themselves apart and trivializes classically feminine hobbies or behaviors such as, uh, and yeah, trivializes classically female hobbies or behaviors as frivolous or vapid. Right. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, from this perspective, they're saying because we don't agree with feminism, we are saying that women's things are bad and then 
being anti-feminism, then you're sticking up, I mean, the men's things are good, you know, but actually, this is such a weird and silly thing, because anti-feminism doesn't necessarily, I mean, I know that, like, on my channel, I speak a lot about men and things, but women can be anti-feminist for, for themselves. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, anti-feminism, I, I, before I even thought about men, I was an anti-feminist. Before I even thought oh, yeah. of the impact of feminism on men, I didn't even think about it. I was just like, you know? <laughs> so. <laughs> no, I know. And it's just, I think it's really funny that they think that we do it because we need male attention. Like, dude, I've been with my partner for two years. I don't need any male attention. Yeah. Like, I've got my male. Yeah, yeah. I don't need anyone to pick me. Like, I'm just saying that you're wrong. I've been picked, yeah. I just don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. Exactly. I it's simple. Like, just, and that's the thing these days. No one can have a debate and end it on a somewhat friendly note. Yeah. Sometimes. It always has to end on such a horrible, negative, either insult, pick me girl, something like that. Like, it's gone to the days where you could debate your points of view safely yeah. without being attacked for them. Yeah, that's that's a problem, yeah. People need to listen to each other with an open mind and not assume I think, that all Well, the best it. way to learn in life is by listening to people you don't agree with. That's true, yeah, yeah. Like, I look after, I mean, I'm not necessarily religious myself. I'm a caregiver, though. So mm -hmm. I look after a lot of different types of people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the ones that I like looking after the most are the ones that are nothing like me, have completely different views, because you can always have an interesting conversation mm -hmm. on what you think. And quite often you end up changing your mind on a lot of things when you can actually have that kind of civil conversation. But if someone's going to... I guess come at you with a wicked attitude like people do nowadays there's an old saying where it doesn't matter how right you are if you're an asshole about it yeah that's true and it's really true like you can miss a lot of really good points of view because you don't like the person saying it yeah that's true and I think anti-feminism gets really prejudged like as soon as people hear anti-feminism they assume like you're a bigot you're you know like you hate I don't know, like, you're just really bad, you know? I've had people call me Nazis, um, yeah. you know, I, I mean, like, they, they, they call you lots of things just because you say you're an anti-feminist, and it's like, yeah, um, yeah, it would be nice if, if people would just listen to what you're saying, but of course, in that sense, they, you, the, they would say I'm provoking them by saying I'm an anti-feminist, but yeah, no, actually, I am an anti-feminist, and no, I'm not a Nazi, you know? <laughs> <Like> <laughs> no, I know what you mean, and it's, and you get ostracized from the female community so much, being an anti-feminist as well, I think. Yeah, and then they always um, assume that it's all about men. That's also a very annoying thing about anti-feminism, because it just becomes like, it's all about men, you know? It's all about, you're just sticking up for men, and it's like, I know that men are a big part of anti-feminism because feminism has so has been so bad to men. What they did to men was like horrible. So it's like they backstab men and you know they it's so I get it that men are a huge part of anti-feminism, but at the same time women are also a part of anti-feminism and what they've done to women is also bad in my opinion. I feel like oh, they have ignored a huge portion of women completely. And just said that they are women, they are speaking for women, they are the woman's opinion. And we as women feel like we were oppressed and we need to go to work and smash those ceilings. And it's like, there are many, many women who don't want that, who never wanted that, who that doesn't even look remotely appealing to, who, you know, like, we exist. We don't want that. We never wanted that. We don't want you. Don't, don't smash the ceiling for us. Just leave it. Just yeah. leave it. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're like, quite happy with it. We don't need it done. Yeah, we don't, we don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, nah. So, yeah, it's it's like, so I feel like what they've done to women is also terrible. Um, mm. And just in general, the way in which they have approached history and, and present in terms of the the way in which feminism was carried about, I feel like it was terrible because I really do believe that we can and could get rights and all of the rights that we need and could have gotten 
and would have gotten all of the rights without um, lying about men, calling them oppressors, this type of societal manipulation, um, and trying to smash culture to pieces. Okay? Yeah. Um, we had a culture, and it wasn't perfect, and it needed to change, and it would have changed. With time and technology, it would have changed. And there was no reason to demonize it, say that it is evil, say that it was misogynist, say that it is anti-woman, and create stories about men being in control of the culture because they hate women and society hating women and thing. And there was no reason to do all of this. And, you know, even if, like, a small subset of society did this, fine. But society should at least say no to those people mm-hmm. and make it clear that that's insanity. It's not normal. You know, it's not what happened. And we should not be teaching children and teaching in schools that the history of Western civilization or whatever is oh, built yeah. on misogyny and that all of all of the culture was just evil to women and it all needs to be smashed and turned down because it hated people. Okay, the culture wasn't perfect. I understand that. But it wasn't perfect to almost everyone. Every single group suffered under the cultural norms of the past because the culture had certain real physical constraints that have more to do with nature, biology, and actual stuff than anything else. So as those things changed, the culture would have changed and did change. And and that is something that would have happened anyway. We don't need to, you know, we didn't yeah, need no, to, to, to tear it's it. all right, though. Because yeah. in like 50 years time, kids are going to be getting taught about toxic misandry instead of toxic masculinity. Mm-hmm. So I think it'll swing in roundabouts eventually because I think it has to come a time where society's like, dude, okay, these people are borderline cult-like now. Like we've got to do something about this. I agree. But in fact, it even has to get to that. It, it should have been viewed as a cult from day one. And instead, the people took these people seriously. We have it in universities. They're, they're talking about this as if it's something normal. Oh. You know, and it's like, yeah. no, I'm sorry. Anything that tells us that we live in a world that is is only privileging men over women and this and that and stuff. And it's like, no, women lacked rights. I agree. Okay, women lacked mm-hmm. rights and stuff, as you said. But these things were the fault of nature, not of men. It, they, there were physical constraints on women that prevented them from going out into the world and being a part of the economic world. These physical yeah. things like breastfeeding, like taking care of children, this has something to do with nature. Like has, what we were actually built to do. Yeah, this has something to do with biology. It has nothing <laughs> yeah. to do with hatred. Like it has zero, zero, <coughs> zero to do with hatred. Nobody hated women. It, you know, we had physical constraints and those constraints made it such that we couldn't do what men could do. So instead, men did those things. Okay? Men did it. And to turn around and now say, looking back in the rearview mirror, that men doing those things is oppression. That men doing those things is misogyny. That men doing those things was because they hated us. It is the worst form of backstabbing that I can imagine. Right? And... It is so inconsiderate to to normal women. Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm so lucky. I've got an amazing partner. And mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine not having a partner that wanted to look after me. Mm-hmm. You know, there's this huge thing where you don't need a man to look after you. Dude, I love my man looking after me. I agree. <laughs> Don't I, I speak for me, please. Yeah, I love the, it when I'm sick literally and looking all after of, me. It's <laughs> fucking great. All of the things that they complain about. They complain about, um, what, chivalry. They used to complain about chivalry in the past. A oh, man, but now there's no good men. Oh, a man opening the door for you. Oh, he's opening the door because you're weak. What nonsense. Like, what oh, no. nonsense. He's opening the door to be ma- to be kind. Like, every single be thing. Polite. Exactly. Everything. Like, we would open a door for an elderly person. Everything that, that they complain about is yeah. misinterpreted. It's like feminism should be called women who misinterpret the world. It's just that. No, like just... You're, they're just women who misinterpret the world. They misinterpreted opening doors as... And then act like a victim. Yeah, as men thinking we are weak. Men go out in the world and say to them, smile, smile, you look beautiful, 
smile, cat calling, okay, fine. You look beautiful. I like you. Yes. Smile. They think that the men are trying to possess them and exert ownership. It's like, what the hell? You have misinterpreted everything. You've misinterpreted. Oh, my boyfriend doesn't like when I go out and like I top that barely covers my tits and a skirt that barely covers my ass. He's controlling. You know, what a horrible human. He's no, he's, he's protecting your image, bro. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> he cares about you. They constantly misinterpret every single thing that men do and just um associate the worst possible intent that nobody would even think of as the intention. And it's like this whole man versus beer thing. Yeah. It's it has talk about a fucking rage bait. Yeah. Honestly. That was insanity. And did you read any of the comments for that? Oh gosh, it 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 it, it had nothing to do with sexual assault, but it, I mean, it was almost as if they were saying man versus rapist. I I, I just don't. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, like where? Did well, the, no, it was more rapist versus bear. There was no question. Oh, sorry, yeah, I mean that, that man would hurt you. Yeah, yeah, there was no man in that. Yeah. It was like, would you rather be in the forest with a rapist or a bear? That was the yeah. question. It seemed, and yeah, I mean. <sighs> Typical for the feminists, right? They they just mix up rapist and man interchangeably. But then, like, I did see a comment from someone, and it was this American guy, and man, did he have a good spin on it. He's like, look, if we put black in front of the man, yeah. if we put Asian in front of the man, right, totally or racist. even just a race instead of a gender, yeah, would be totally there would racist. would be complete and utter outrage. Of course, worldwide. Of course, would you rather be in the forest with a black man or a bear? A bear, a bear, a bear. A Imagine bear. that. A bear. Why? Because black men suck. Black men have raped me. <laughs> Sorry, but no, black- but you get what I mean. Yeah. Like. That whole thing, when I read that, I was like, that just throws your whole argument out the window. Because it's inherently just sexist and fucking awful. Um, and then everyone's trying to say, when you say, ah, oh, I'd pick the man, oh, well, you're supporting abuses. Yeah. If you're like, dude, no, I just think that a man's going to be more helpful than a bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean... The likelihood is that a man will help you to escape the forest or whatever. That was the, the point. A human would be more beneficial than a bear. But, um, yeah, but if you think about it like that, like in terms of the sexual assault thing, then it changes the question. But, of course, you know, with feminists being feminists, that's the first thing they think about, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So if you had to sum up your views on feminism, in total, what would you like like the world to know about your views on feminism? Um, honestly, just stop. Mm-hmm. Please just stop because mm-hmm. it's not necessary anymore. We've got everything we need. How about for like once in the human existence we try to just be happy with what's actually there? Mm-hmm. Because the more they try and tear it down, the more pushback we're going to get. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's half the issue is, you know, the more one side argues this way, the more that side pushes that way. Yeah. And that's the problem is then you end up polarizing entire genders right. over something so trivial as looking after kids or going to work. Right. I agree. Um, so, yeah, I think maybe just like think twice and think about how many men you've met in your life how many of them have actually had bad intentions. Mm -hmm. And you might find that most of them are actually decent people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Thanks a lot for interviewing. I really, really appreciate it. Um, You know, uh, Women Against Feminism, 